Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a side fan fold kaleidoscope. Start by smoothing out as many wrinkles as you can. You want a nice smooth surface to work with. And then using a washable marker and a piece of kite string that I've tied around it, I'm going to mark out my pattern. Then I'm going to pleat along these lines, trying to make those lines as straight as possible. For this project, I decided to leave the tying in and do very little editing. There might be some edits here and there where I've walked away from the table or, you know, couldn't find something and it took a couple of minutes, but it's not doing you any favor if I cut out everything or speed it way up. This shirt took me 33 minutes to tie up regular speed. I have it sped up just a little bit, but you need to see the detail. Um, this shirt is going to be a do as I say, not as I do type of tutorial. First of all, a side fan fold kaleidoscope. Well, what in the heck is that? Gee, I honestly don't really know. That is not what I intended on making in the beginning, but it's what it ended up being because I had to shift gears. So I started out on this first line making really tiny pleats because it has been my experience that as the pleats go down the shirt, they get a lot taller. So these pleats are probably a half inch or smaller. Now, this is where you want to do as I say, not as I do. Do yourself a favor and start on that second line. The second line that I drew, you wanna start your pleats there and start them as small as you can. It just will make your life a lot easier. So I'm going to let you watch this because it's, it's easier just to watch it than for me to try to explain and I will jump in here and there when I need to explain what I'm doing. Now, right here, this tool that I'm using is from boredomwithgen.com and they are pleating tools and they're very helpful, especially when the pleats become really small. You're able to stick the tool down in there and make your pleats nice and straight. And then I'm just securing it by using rubber bands, and these are my tiny baby hair rubber bands. All right, right around here is where I start to run into some trouble with my pleats. Like I said, they get taller as they go down the shirt and my rubber bands are smashing them a little bit so I'm losing them in the folds, okay? And I'm also trying to keep that second line that I drew on nice and straight. Now, where you pull on the fabric a little bit, it kind of helps straighten out the pleats but you really need to be careful that you're not pulling too hard. If you pull really hard and yank your pleats, you can create where your line that you're trying to keep straight becomes wonky, which will change the arc of the shirt. So just pay attention to what you're doing. So if you watch me, I'll hold the part that's already folded up and banded. I'll kind of hold that down tight while I gently pull on the pleats and it just sort of helps flatten them out a little bit. But if you notice, like look at all that loose fabric back there. 
they're huge. I think the pleats are, you know, two and a half inches tall and they're becoming really difficult to work with. Also, this is a Gildan V-neck ladies cut shirt. So I've got the, the V-neck part has the, like the collar seams. And then also, um, like the seam, the, the shoulder seam for the, what do you call it? The shirt, the arm, the arm thingy. <laughs> you guys, I'm still sick. Sorry. I'm just, my brain is in a fog. Um, so I struggle a lot with the V-neck, the seams and the sleeve um up at the top and it just really frustrates me at this point i don't know you probably can't tell but i keep going down to my knees because my back is starting to hurt so i'm down on my knees pleading i'm standing up pleading i'm down on my knees pleading um this is where i began to think this is not going to work this side fan fold that I'm making, the pleats are too big, the rubber bands are gonna smash them down. How am I going to get the die on it? What type of container am I going to use? It's going to be too tall for the gutter. Yada, 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 right? As dyers, you know, you guys go through the same thing. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time on this back part because I'm trying to make it just a side fan fold and it's not working out. I mean, just look at how tall those pleats are. It's it's becoming just impossible to make this a regular side fan fold. What I would normally do if I really wanted to keep this a side fan fold, I would introduce secondary pleats, which drops the height of the pleats down drastically. When you do that, it creates like branches and they look like feathers. I didn't want that for this shirt and I don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about making secondary pleats because I don't demonstrate it in this tutorial, but that could be done. I did not want that for this shirt. I'm just desperately trying to make this a side fan fold and eventually I will give up. As I'm watching this back during the editing process, I'm thinking to myself, why didn't I just start over? If it's giving me this much trouble, just give up, start over. No, I can't do that. I must continue on. I, I don't know why I didn't start over. So now the back half, we're shifting gears. It's really, it's still a side fan fold. I mean, if you stand it up, the pleats are exactly the same. They're just taller. 
But now what I'm trying to do is just try to get them smooth and get them lined up. I am somewhat of a perfectionist. I want to make everything as perfect as possible and perfect doesn't exist and in tie dye it especially doesn't exist. But I want to get them really smooth. I'm not even sure at this point if I've given up on the idea that it's a side fan fold. I think I'm still trying for it because this goes on for quite some time. And for those of you that are still watching me go through this, I really appreciate it because this is the reality of tie dye. I speed things up a lot just to try to save on time because I know it gets frustrating. But I specifically, like I mentioned earlier, I wanted to leave this all in because if you are brand spanking new to tie dye, you watch my videos and think, oh, it's just so easy and it's not so easy for me. Well, I just want you to know, it's not always so easy for me either. So right here is where it turns into the kaleidoscope. Many of you have seen me make a kaleidoscope shirt lots of times, right? So normally you'll see me S pattern back and forth on the table. I'm basically doing the same thing, I'm just doing it a different way. You'll see when I turn it up on its side, it has that S pattern. I guess what you could call this is maybe accordion folding it. That, that's all I'm doing, I'm just folding it up and down, up and down on itself. And then I'm going to secure it by using rubber bands. These are my second favorite rubber bands and I do have links down below in the description box for them and everything else that I use for tie dye. So make sure that you check that out. Finally, now we get to add the dye. This is the fun part of tie dyeing. So I'm using Stormy Sky from Pro Chemical and Dye. It's my very first time using Pro Chemical and Dye Procyon Dye. And I can tell you that this color is absolutely amazing. I know a lot of you have already seen it and already have it, but this is very exciting for me because it's my first time. And if you don't have Stormy Sky from Pro Chemical and Dye yet, you need to run right out and get it before they sell out because this color is probably like the prettiest color that even exists anywhere, all right? So I'm adding my dye in thin little strips. I'm leaving white space in between because I want the dye to have a chance to breathe in that white area and show the color splits. So let's talk about this setup here for just a minute. So this is probably the most MacDivered project to date. So I've got my bin, which is one of my shorter bins with like a six inch side sidewall and uh, I've got my over the sink strainer on an incline and then inside of that I have this thing that I got from the dollar store I don't know what it is I think maybe it's for putting files in it but maybe it's for the kitchen I have no idea and then holding the whole thing up is a little dollar store colander so that way it's not going to slide 
And then I'm using the silicone cake molds as the ice barrier and I'm using clothespins to attach it to the rack so it won't go anywhere. I am very sorry, I didn't move the container. You can't see me add the die to the kaleidoscope part, but I did it the same way that I always do. I just added stripes of the stormy sky and left white space. Now I give the project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure. The shirt's already been soaked in soda ash, but since I'm adding ice to it, I wanna make sure that the pH stays up around 10.5 to 11. And I'm using my Nugget Ice, my Frigidaire Nugget Ice Machine Ice, and I absolutely love the new machine, you guys. It is perfect in every single way. I seriously recommend it. I really recommended the last one, but I really, really recommend this one. So Christmas is coming. Tell your husbands and wives and boyfriends and girlfriends that you want one because you really do want this machine. It's a good idea to wear gloves at this point. So just in case you don't understand, I've got the center fan fold tip up at the very top of the incline and the kaleidoscope is down at the bottom. And when I add my ice, I like to start at the bottom and work my way to the top. That way it doesn't roll the die downhill on me. And you wanna let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours. And I like to go for the full 48 hours. So now it's time for the rinse out and you wanna start by using cold water. Cold water is going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric and then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. That way you get the soda ash to go down your drain and not into the washing machine. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirilon. Kirilon is a professional textile detergent. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft, and Millsoft is a professional fabric softener. Then I'll put it in the dryer, and I'll iron it, and we'll come back and we'll see the results. I was just sitting here thinking about this shirt and wondering how much time do I have invested in one project? I bet well over a week. So you have to order the shirts, order the dye, pay for shipping and handling, wait for those things to come. When they arrive, you gotta pre-wash the shirts. That's a couple hot water cycles and then dry them so you can fold them and store them away. You gotta put it in soda ash, wait for that. Then you've gotta dye it and then batch it for a couple of days. And then it's time for the rinse out. And that takes like all day to do your rinsing and washing and ironing. So, I mean, that's a lot of time. So for those of you that sell your shirts and people complain about your prices, send them to this tutorial and that way maybe they can learn what goes into making tie dye. Well, here it is guys. Here's our side fan fold kaleidoscope after it's been washed and dried. And I think it turned out absolutely amazing. Like this color is incredible, you guys. Most of you probably already have it, but if you don't have this color yet, place your order right away. There is no reason to wait. I waited, I've waited a long time. Back summertime, uh, Angela Charty from Sunshine Dyes gave me a gravity spiral, and I absolutely love that shirt and wear it constantly, and love the color, and was like, eh, I don't need to get any dye. And then recently, you guys all see Scott Walker's um, side fan folds that he's been doing over at Rad Dyes. Thank you, Scott and Kelly, for making me really pay attention to this color because it's phenomenal. Get yourself Stormy Sky from Pro Chemical and Dye. Just don't wait because if you don't have it already, I do predict that people are going to see this and possibly say, okay, I'm going to get the color. Because look at that. All of that from one jar of dye. I don't even know if I could make something look this beautiful if I tried. And it's all in one jar. Like that's so cost effective. So the top of the pleat has the magenta on it. And then the bottom of the pleat has like the color flows and the turquoise. Does that make sense? So you have a top of the pleat, then it goes down and then it comes up and it goes down and comes up like that. So I placed the die on the top side of the pleat. It's the magenta color. And then the part that is down on the bottom where the ice melts through, that's giving all those greens. Like, I don't know. I don't think I've ever talked this much about one color before. Yeah, I'm, 
I'm floored. I've seen it, I own shirts with it, but I think when you make it for yourself and you achieve it on your own, it's like a whole different experience. So what do you guys think of this shirt? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie-dyeing.